Podcast. Welcome to Willie D Live. I'm here with Danny. And we're about to go in on some real, real serious issues and some funny things. You know what I'm saying? Right now in the building, ladies and gentlemen, Juan Villarreal. You dig what I'm saying? That's right. I'm My here. My man. What's up, homie? Yeah, man, what's up? Man, Thank man, you. Man, I'm so Thank glad to have you on the show, man. Me and this guy, man, we've been, we've been homies for a long, long, long time. And, and look here, man, you know, before we start off the show, we like, I always like to start off the show with a positive story. So much negative stuff going yeah. on in the world today. We want to start the show off with a positive story. Now, you guys are familiar with uh, Gabby Douglas, Olympian Gabby Douglas. She's a gymnast who competed in the 2016 Olympics for uh, Team USA. On August 9th, 2016, Douglas and her teammates jumped, flipped, and spun their way onto the gold medal podium for the women's gymnastics team all around. They got up on the stand and stood proudly as the U.S. national team blared through the stadium. Uh, uh, the U.S. national anthem blared through the stadium. It was a happy moment until some jerks on the internet chimed in. People online started criticizing Douglas for not putting her hand over her heart during the national anthem. She wasn't being patriotic enough, they said. The Virginian-born woman competing for Team USA in the Olympics while draped in a leotard almost literally made out of the American flag isn't patriotic enough. I would say it's absurd, but we all know her patriotism isn't really the issue. After all, Michael Phelps laughed at his buddy's antics while the national anthem played for one of his gold medals, and no one took to Twitter to harass him. But Douglas is a black woman, and to internet trolls, that's a double whammy in terms of being a target for harassment about everything from her hair to her smile to her general demeanor, and even accusing her of bleaching her skin. I tried to stay off the internet because there's just too much negativity, Douglas reportedly said, choking back tears. Either it was about my hair or my hand not being over my heart or I looked depressed. It was hurtful. It was. It's been kind of a lot to deal with. Ghostbusters star and Olympics enthusiast Leslie Jones also knows a thing or two about online harassment. Jones faced an absolutely horrific amount of harassment after Ghostbusters premiered in July. And when she heard what was happening to Gabby, she jumped to the gymnast's defense. She jumped to the gymnast's defense. Okay, yo, I just heard Gabby getting attacked on her page. Show her some love, said Jones. Jones started the hashtag Love for Gabby USA, a spinoff on the Love for Leslie J hashtag people used to support her just a month ago. And other Twitter users started jumping in fast. Gabby also received support from TV producer Shonda Rhimes. She received uh, support from uh, Kerry Washington and also Gabrielle Union. Big, big, big shout out for Leslie Jones for doing that. that. That's what I'm talking about, man. We need to try to look out for each other. There's way too much negativity out there. Also, big shout out for, for Kerry Washington and, and Gabriel Union for jumping on and, and also supporting this young woman. She, she, made us, she made us proud. But of course, you got all these, these, these internet bullies out there. A lot of you motherfuckers ain't got no life. You ain't got nothing to do with yourself. When you die, ain't nobody gonna care about you. And so you try to make it bad for everybody else. You want everybody else to be miserable because your ass is miserable. And some of these people, you can look at them, man. You can go to their profile, they ain't got no friends, they ain't got no followers, they, they make comments all the time. Nobody ever responds to their comments. They just, and they got a million comments and nobody ever respond to them. Nope. And so they just troll the internet. If they see anything, happy anybody happy they just go in and attack yep. and try to bring people down i hate you motherfuckers i really do i really do and if i ever catch one of if you ever say if i ever catch one of you out of pocket that disrespect me i'm gonna kick your ass i'm telling you straight up <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna make it hard for you to breathe you I, dig what i'm yeah, saying I and i think you, it should be like that because the internet just made it too easy for people to have courage yeah you know it's courage good. should be something you should be should, should be you should have based on, uh, based on uh, trial and, and error and based on uh, going through some things, yeah. you know, going through some things. You know, I, I got courage because I've faced this type of uh, adversity before and I've gotten through it. I know what to do. That's, that's what courage should come from. It shouldn't just come from, okay, I got an internet. I got the internet. I got a computer. Uh, 
mom is the locked door. Lock the door, mom. Right. And they just didn't <laughs> right. want to feel secure. Like that, that's cold blooded, man, yeah. to treat that girl like that. And, and we talking about a gold medalist, somebody who's made history. Yeah. Why these bastards ain't did nothing? Cause only only nothing ass people troll. First of all, only nothing ass people troll. One of the things that I do like about the internet is that it does give people who are, are not necessarily have a lot of friends or feel feel that, that their life really matters. It gives them an outlet, you know, yeah. to communicate with the rest of the world. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. But it's the people that take advantage of it and yeah. do dirty shit like troll people and be real negative. I hate them motherfuckers. I, do I can't too, stand bro. them. I one. can't stand them fuckers either, bro. Man, one. I can't, I can't. You know what, I, I even tell people like, I've gotten, you know, two, 3,000 likes on posts because I've told people like, they're right. just hating on good things. And right. I'm like, hey man, I don't think this post was for you to post some hate. Right. So instead of posting all this hate, why don't you take this little two or three minutes or whatever and post somebody to you love that you love them? Send right. somebody you love a, a love you, hey, wow. a love you, a smiley face, instead of wasting time with your little bullshit and, and crying and, and trying to fuck up somebody else's day. They don't That's, love nobody, though. No. They, they, they don't, don't even love it's themselves. It's easier to hate than it is to love. That's yeah. what I've come to the conclusion of. Because there's no way that hate can, it finds its way into everything. It just must be easier. Yeah, that's cold blooded, man. Yep. I, you know, that, I never thought of it that way. Like you just said, like yeah, just yeah. send some positive energy yeah, out some to people that you stuff. love. Nobody want to hear that bullshit, dude. Right. And they, they put a great post up there, and then people start doing, like you said, bashing it and trying to find other ways to attack it. And I was like, right. bro, just instead of take that little two, three minutes, send your son, your mom, your dad. Hey, I love you. Right. Because we don't care about that bullshit. Well, people care about Juan Villarreal, man. You got a big show at the House of Blues. Tonight. The House of Blues, Willie. Yeah. When it, is I mean, it? And it's tonight. It's tonight. It's tonight. It's tonight. Yeah. My, Ramiro Casas, he's been my road manager for a long time. And he's like, man, let me help you promote, man. I want to promote a little bit, too. And I'm like, go ahead, man, get into this. So he got me in the House of Blues. Right. Awesome. And, and we're doing good. We're doing the small room. It's, uh, you know, 125 But that, that don't matter shit. Yeah. It's the House of Blues. Yeah, shit. I got tickets on Live Nation. Let me grab my phone. Because I'm going to go virtual. Okay. So yeah. So it's life. See everybody in here. That's that's daddy. That's one. I ain't gonna show you everybody works. We don't, we don't need y'all trying to steal our ideas or nothing. Some of y'all trying to hook, trying to have the same kind of hookup we got and all that shit. We ain't finna let y'all do all that. But anyway, go ahead, one. Oh, I forgot, bro. I'm buzzing right now. Oh, now you buzzing. Oh, Lord. You, you know, just playing. You, 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 but, <laughs> but, you, but you buzzing uh, literally and figuratively speaking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Right. No, I'm just right. saying, like, yeah, it's... Uh, so what time yeah. is at the House of Blues? It's going to be at, at 9 o'clock. I'm going to need some tickets, Willie. Yeah, you good. <laughs> okay. You good. But you know what? One, people are scalping your tickets for, like, two, you, up to 200 Did bucks, you see right? that, bro? Yeah. Did you see that? They bought some tickets, and they're selling them for 162 one, And, Willie, you know me, What's man. What's the actual price, though? They're 25 bucks. <laughs> Like at twenty five bucks because because look my fans people like, don't make some money. They don't realistically, my fans, uh, my fans, uh, a lot of my fans don't make over thirty thousand a year. Right. So I, I don't want to. I don't need that extra five dollars, ten dollars, thirty five, four dollars, twenty, twenty five bucks is good. That's forty bucks. You and your wife in the house, or you and your homeboys are in the That's house. That's a good time. And and, and and chill. That's a good date. You, plus you're gonna spend some drinks or whatever. So it's if I buy one twenty, the hundred twenty dollars worth of tickets. I can't buy food. I can't, you know. I can't. yeah. And we ball on the budget, and, so right. and parking and yeah. Twenty five dollars is really good. Juan, yeah. you've been getting money in Hollywood for a long time, man. Yeah. Man, the, the only thing is, I don't, you know, let everybody know. I don't go bragging everybody and stuff like people. Oh, I just got this. I just got this. I'm yeah. like, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I learned that from Rushon McDonald, who's Steve Harvey's manager. Right. You know what I mean, I learned that. I've worked with greats, bro. Like, right. I've gotten lucky. I've got lectured and tutored and, and mentored by great people, Jamie Foxx and Cedric and DL and, you know, Carlos Mencia and just different people. Right. So I got really lucky, man. Yeah, you, you've, you've been on the circuit, like, like literally for about, what, tw like 22 years? 24. About 24 yeah. years. Let me ask you something. Now, are you one of those type of people who, who, are, who are cool with, like, exactly where you are or what you like to, like, do you want? Do you care about doing stadiums and and having television shows and all that kind of you stuff? You know what, Willie? Stadiums are are different because they're too easy. 
Like, you know, people, it's it's a big event. A stadium is a big event. There's 3,000 people. That's easy for me. Because right. those people are excited. They got dressed. They got their babysitters. They got their hair fixed. And, you know, so they're 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 ready to laugh. Right. Th- those are, are, are too easy. And then I don't even get to say hi to them or shake their hands or nothing. Mm-hmm. I like doing intimate rooms where I can see my fans and after the show, shake their hands, talk to them, and get a little feedback and stuff. Yeah. That's, that's what I like to do, man. Those big stadiums, they're cool. They're fun you know, for the money. And then right. the stadium, somebody's going to laugh. You know, more intimate. If you suck, you'll know instantly. That's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. I just did a, I did a show uh, in San Antonio last week, and I did a surprise guest spot at a martini bar, and they had like four comedians, and then the headline, it was like, I will let you do a guest spot in front of me, but you've been doing it for a long time, so why don't you go up after me? So to do a guest spot after the headliner, it's kind of weird. But I did it. And then the intro was like, oh, this guy, you see them on HBO, BET, Showtime. You see them with Cedric and Jay, you know, all, this, all these people. And uh, uh, they just kept blowing me up. And then when they brought me on stage, I didn't get two applause. I didn't Because right. they didn't know me, which I <laughs> right. love that. I'm like, right. okay, fuckers, you don't know me, but yeah. you will after this show. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Googling like, me after this. Yeah, right, oh, they right. do. They, they do. And I went up there and just had a great time. And those are the fun ones for me, like where they don't know you. Because, man, Willie, you know, I started... You know, doing urban, just just black crowds, man. When I first started, right? And I remember you, know, you from and, just joking, and, yeah. And even um, what's the other one? The, the, the hip hop comedy the, the hip hop. That's where I started at the hip hop yeah. and at the comedy showcase. Both of those clubs, right? It, it's it's crazy, man. Like yeah. it's, I, I had to do that, like. And then sometimes these shows were at, I mean, the shows gonna start at ten. It's one thirty. If it's people right. dancing, they grinding, <laughs> they buzzing, and then they would just cut the music off. Okay, man, we, we got a comedian, man, B.A.T., man. Yeah, that gives us a warm little bit. And they, they, you know what I mean? These people are like, oh, man, they're pissed, bro. Right. They're, they're, they're grinding. Like, some right. of them, I thought they were doing it, bro. Like, right. no, they're doing it. My and, type and, of party. Yeah. Right. And then and then to throw, cut the music off, cut the vibe off, and then throw a little mesquite up there. And I'm up, what's up, fuckers? Right. Now, yeah. now, what, now, what kind of kid were you, man? I know a lot of comedians say that they were class clowns. No, not me, Willie. I was... Bro, we were poor, man. I went to 17 different schools. My parents were divorced. I got 17, 17 bro. They, they, yeah, they, you know, they, they were like, your son's not going to make it. He's very intelligent, <laughs> but he's not going to graduate at this level. And my dad was in another world. He's like, you know, doing his thing. My mom was doing her thing. My little brother went to go live with my uncle. I got scattered around all over the place, man. And right. that's what I'm saying. Courage. Right. I done been through courage, bro. Like, I done been through a lot of stuff. Yeah. People did a lot of bad things to me, and you know, and I couldn't even tell nobody. I was afraid to tell people. So, so like my therapist, I talked to my therapist or whatever, and they're like, y- "You're supposed to be crazy." Like, you know what? That's the thing. That's yeah. the thing with with comedians. Comedians. One one of the things, reason why I do have such a, a, a I guess a a love for um, comedians is because comedians are brilliant. Like the majority of comedians that I know, the really good ones, like you, they're, they're brilliant. They're really smart people. And the, the thing is that you guys have to make, your job is to make people laugh. Yeah. So what makes you laugh? You know, Especially like when, when you're you, going through you, that. Like when you're going through it, when you got to go through things. Like you said, you need a therapist. Like I would never have guessed one, one would need a therapist because yeah. it seemed like you would just make yourself laugh. I mean, no, you know, man. like, yeah, we like make, make everybody else laugh. Like how do you, how do you find that, that, that inter thing that, that makes you have joy? Man, like you I, give it to I, everybody I, I, else. I get, I get seeing people screaming and looking at me. Like, people pay to see me, man. Like, that yeah. freaks me out. Like, they get ready. Like I said, it's an event. They pay to get there to see me. So that's my job. So I have to work really hard at that. But I'll give you an example. My stepmom, uh, she couldn't swallow. She I can't swallow. So I took her to the hospital, to the doctor, and she had a tumor in the throat. And then they, that night, they put a peg tube in her stomach where mm-hmm. it's, you got to put medicine and food every four hours. And that happened like in one day, like in one day. And then my dad's like, I don't know how to do that because there's machines, feet. So I, I had to give up comedy for eight months. Mm-hmm. For eight months, man, I didn't have no income, nothing. My mom, therapy, chemo, radiation every day, every day. And, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't know I was going to be able to do that for my stepmom, but I had to take care of her, man, and, and help her bathe and, you know, it's weird, man, because I never thought I'd be able to do that, but it's like the heart just takes over and says, hey, yeah. like, that's, that's your mom, bro. It's like, she took care of you, and, right. and, and I did it, you know what I mean? And, and she didn't make it. And, you know, I was getting... Now, I, when I, was this? Uh, this was almost two years ago, three years ago. This oh. was December the 3rd would be three years ago. Okay. So, 
uh, I would ask Carlos for a nickel. We, we make fun of it. A nickel is 5,000 for rich people. So I, I borrowed a lot of nickel. Right. Like, Ideal. I need to borrow a nickel, bro. Like people were helping me and they were like, wow, man, let, let people know your mom's sick. But I never did that. For eight months, I didn't tell people, like, yeah, my mom's sick. And right. go fun. So I didn't, I don't, I don't really cry on Facebook, bro. Like everybody's got a lot of stuff going on. Because Facebook, you read, you're happy, you're sad. Oh, and then you're like, you know what I mean? It's right. just crazy, man. So my mom was like, the, the surgery was set up. They didn't do it because they found it went everywhere. So they put and her in hospice. Is, she had cancer? Yeah, she had okay. cancer. Yeah. So they, they sent her to hospice. So I, I told the doctor, what do you mean? He's like, we can't do this. We, we have to let her know that we, we, we can't do it. And I never lied to my mom. I promised her I never I had power of attorney. I said, mom, I'll never lie to you. So to walk back in the room, my mom smiling like, what's going on, mijo? And I just kind of like, and she's like, what? I'm like, they're, they're not going to do it, mom. She's like, it, it spread like it went everywhere, mom. Am I gonna die? I'm like, yeah. Like I couldn't tell her. Mm -hmm. And she goes, You set up some shows, right? I'm like, yeah, I set up some shows a week after the surgery. And I sold them all out. You know what I mean? At the showcase, five sold out shows. And then she goes, When are your shows? And I'm like, it, it don't matter. She goes, No, when when is your show? I'm like, they start Thursday, mom. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. She goes, by Wednesday, mijo, I'll be with God. I'll go. She said, I'll die Wednesday so you can go do your shows. Just like wow. that. My mom was a bee. She was funny. My stepmom, she was. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she passed away. She passed away. Uh, I can see her because, you know, they send. She the passed away Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday morning. She A hospice is, you know, we give them morphine. And these yeah. people wanted me to give her morphine every four hours. So some lady shows up and, you know, they, they check on you. He's like, he's not doing it. He's doing it every eight hours. And I'm mm -hmm. like, look, I'm killing my mom, okay? Y'all send her home for me to kill her. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to kill her. She's going to die. So just oh hold on. God. I'm just trying to keep her another day because she can still hear. Right. So I let everybody, and my little brother had Down syndrome. My half brother has Down syndrome. So, you know, I wanted him to say his goodbyes and do all this stuff. So anyway, that happened. Then they told me the, the people that came to, the DEA showed up first. The DEA showed up first in my house. My mom passed away. They were there within 30 minutes for to pick up, pick up the morphine and all these pills that I've been giving my mom and we need this and they, they want to count and like man nobody does pills here like take the, the hospital sent wow. the DA no, uh, when you're in hospice they show up they, they come to your house and they destroy all the drugs that you have there because you know people sell them Willie so they, oh. thought, they, thought, they thought that I was going to be one of the dudes trying to sell wow. those wow yeah so they were the first ones that showed up before anybody like okay like that, that damn, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I then about three hours that. later, my the, the people come to the corner, whatever, to come pick up my mom, and then they ask everybody to leave, to, to leave the uh, to room because they don't want her to see her. And I'm like, ah, I'm not leaving. He goes, no, no, we, we advise people not to see this. We would act like for you to just to go, like, dude, like, I'm gonna be right here. Okay, so she passed away Thursday, you know, Wednesday night, all that stuff went, whatever. Thursday, I slept till about three, four o'clock, and then I went to do the show that night. And I did five shows, sold out shows, didn't mention it, didn't bring it up. I still don't remember too much what I said, but I got about 20 standing ovations. Right. So I guess I vented a lot of shit. And because even my managers and my kids and people that see my shows all the time, they were like, fuck that. That was, that was badass. I'm like, yeah. I, I was, you think was it's because your mom mentioned your shows that you had to go so hard? The fact that she asked you, Winning your shows. Oh, she was doing that the whole eight months because I kept turning down shows and then I, I got some deposits and I had to send deposits. You know, I got to send them all back. And then so you think that since she passed away the day before that morning, you just were like, I have to go hard for my mom. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. don't remember any of it? Nah. Just fuckers. I know I said fuckers a few times. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't remember what I, what I talked about. When but it was it was a happy. The, did it get recorded? Have you watched it? Have you... no, I didn't let nobody record that. They didn't. My manager was like, "You want me to record tomorrow?" I'm like, "No, I'm good." And then I went, wow. you know, and then I went to go pick up my grandkids, and you know, what I mean, I, I started enjoying life, bro. You got like, grandkids, man? Yeah, man, I got a nine. Man, man, let's, let's, let's. I got a, <laughs> I got a thirty year old. I got a twenty nine year old. Oh my god! Let's, let's, I'm, let's I'm talk gonna, about I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna be fifty. Let's like, talk about that when we come kid. back. Let me take a break, right? We're, we're quick. We're gonna talk about that when we come let's back. Let's talk about it, bro. That's what's up, y'all. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> 